So uh, first slide through here, just uh, wanted to kind of bring your attention and can just let's stop for a minute and think about this. What if I could use my existing data system, data management system, but work from anywhere? Is that even a possibility? I'd like to introduce you a couple of options or a handful of options to talk about or to get your head processing um, in, in those directions. The first one is, of course, existing on-premise solutions, and I'll explain what that means in a little bit. Second option we're going to talk about is uh, for PDM professional customers, they can use Web2 functionality. Uh, maybe they're using it today, maybe you're not using it today, or uh, you just want to learn what it is, what, what it does. And the third solution we're going to talk about, or third option avenue we're going to talk about, is a, a cloud-hosted system, and that can go both ways. That can go with a, a server kind of base systems, what we call the IaaS method, infrastructure as a service, through Azure or uh, some kind of cloud hosting um, server system, or there is the SaaS model, which is software as a service. Uh, that would kind of entail the three D experience platform. And it's a full on cloud solution, data management solution that we can discuss. But first things first, let's talk about that option number one. This probably applies to the majority of our customers, people that own a current server or are thinking about purchasing one. So uh, on on-premise infrastructure, it's usually pretty straightforward. It's fairly simple. There is an office, uh, whether whatever that it is, with a bunch of user machines, engineers, sales, purchasing, you name it. There's also a server that lives in your office somewhere in a closet or in a server room that is maintained by IT. So that's what we would consider a simple on-premise infrastructure. All the engineers have a machine for themselves. There are SolidWorks and clients and softwares that are installed on all those machines. So out of office with PDM, standard or pro on an existing infrastructure, Yes, that is possible. That is something we want to make sure you guys understand. Uh, first and foremost, of course, customers use a VPN. It's a private connection to your server from your machine, wherever you are. You do not, don't necessarily have to be in the office to use that VPN. And it does not necessarily need to be PDM professional as well. You can do that with PDM standard. Now, being on VPN allows you to work from pretty much anywhere as long as you have access to the internet. There are some things we can do to help you or to make your life simpler. So let's talk a little bit about that. First thing I wanna discuss is your SOLIDWORKS PDM add-in. When you're working through a VPN connection, turn that off. Maybe you don't need to be consuming that data at all times, right? As long as you have that PDM add-in on in your SOLIDWORKS, it is connected to your server, it is consuming information. So if all you're doing from home is maybe, you know, designing some CAD document, you don't necessarily need to be consuming that information and using that VPN connection. So turn it off, I'm sure it's gonna help you out with speed. Second best practice we wanna talk a little bit about there is maybe you do need that add-in, right? Maybe you know, there is some information you need. You need to check something out or, you know, get some information or update some metadata. That's perfectly fine. But uh, another thing you can do is throttle it back a little bit, a little bit. Don't let it consume your entire VPN connection, right? There are some options and we can help you with those. We can help you with best practices, but there are some options that you can do to kind of limit on how much speed or how much network that add-in is consuming. So then again, let's talk a little bit about options. Out of the office, with PDM, standard or pro, on premise, on your existing infrastructure. Yes, that is available. Um, this option that I'm gonna talk about now, is not widely discussed. A VPN is definitely more prevalent and people know that a lot more, but working offline is also a great alternative. You don't necessarily have to be online to be working in PDM. You can simply check things out before leaving the office or um, get files from home and then check them out and work offline from that point on. So this is a great alternative for people that want to work from home and don't want to rely on VPN or anything like that. You can simply check your files out, get them local, get to your local cache, 
and then you have full control of them, whether you're online or not. So it's very simple to do this. Just right click, check it out, or get right click, get latest, and just like that, you have them in your local cache. From that point on, you can simply click on tools and work offline, and that's pretty much it. PDM will do the rest. PDM will pull the plug for you, and you can happily work on those files as much as you like on the weekend or at home and not have to worry about the internet. So this concludes option number one, right? Talking a little bit about for, uh, for customers that are on premise today, what are the options? So there are two avenues there, VPN or working offline. So those two are available for PDM Pro and standard customers. The second option I want to talk about is Web 2. Now this only applies for SOLIDWORKS PDM professional customers. But um, if you have PDM professional set up today or you're interested in Web 2, let us know. We can talk about what it would take to get you there. First that question that I want to get out of the way is, who is it for? Web 2 is mostly for people that, of course, want to access data from anywhere. It doesn't require any installation. It doesn't require any um, software installation per se. And mostly customers that want to give access to their customers or people that want to give access to vendors or suppliers, you can do that with the web. You can just give them a login, have them log in to your PDM system to a certain folder or to the entire vault and have them collaborate with you from there. Of course, it can be used to check out and download files. So some light duty work is, is possible, can work that is. So I wouldn't recommend it to do it full time. That won't be that won't be that much fun. But it can be done, but that won't be that much fun. It's not meant for that. It's meant for collaborating with others and, and people that are not solely designing. A couple of facts that I want to get out of the way with Web two. It does consume a license. So people get uh, ask me that all the time. It does consume a full license. So if you were going to give access to a supplier or a vendor that license needs to be accounted for. Of course, PDM doesn't care who pays for that license. So if your supplier wants to purchase a license and use it, it can. This does use permissions. So when you go to the admin tool, set up your user, it's the same user permissions that are set up there apply on the web as well. Now, it does not require installation. So that's the good part, right? You can go on any browser, browse to that website and log in. And this last bullet here, I really like that. If you really wished, you can download e-drawings on your phone, iPhone or Android, and you can download files from the web and open them on your phone or in your tablet. It works in a pinch when you're on the go and you need to view something and consume information. You can definitely do that with the Web2 interface. So we just talked a little bit about two different options and each one of those have their pros and cons, right? We talked a little bit about VPN. We talked a little bit about working offline. We talked a little bit about working with Web2. Next, let's focus on um, the IAS model, which is infrastructure as a service. This would apply for customers that maybe don't have a server today or their existing service aging and they wanna kind of move to a cloud solution. Uh, that would apply for you. First thing I want to get out of the way is let's let this sink in for a minute. There is no cloud. I really like this slide because really we shouldn't be afraid of the word. We shouldn't be afraid of the cloud. You're literally just using someone else's machine and that's all there is to it. IAS or infrastructure as a service has a bunch of different benefits and I chose to kind of point out those benefits to you guys so you can understand why some people are choosing to go in that direction and why there is value in this service. Um, some people really like the control that they gain from having their own server and that's perfectly fine, but IAS can outsource some of your work and help you, you know, gain time throughout your day. Of course, you can use many different systems. Uh, we have our partners that we work with, but we can also work with Azure or AWS. We can have PDM on one of those cloud machines, and we can even have SOLIDWORKS on one of those cloud machines. So a system can be tailored to your needs and definitely can grow with you as you grow, as your company grows. 
We also have a, a program called Insight that can help you with added benefits, I'm going to say, or added support, right? We can do your upgrades every year, or we can do your, um, you can be at, at your admin for you. There's many different things we can do for that, uh, that Insight program or within that Insight program. Now, benefit number one that I wanted to talk about with infrastructure as a service is licensing and backup. With IAS, um, doesn't matter which provider you're in, most of them will offer included licensing. So you don't have to worry about Windows licenses. You don't have to worry about Windows 10 machine licensing if you're going there. Um, you don't have to worry about Microsoft SQL licensing, firewalls, certificates, all that is included with your pricing and you don't have to keep track of it. Backup is included with pretty much all of the infrastructure as a service models out there. Um, if you work with us, with our partners, we offer a 30 day rolling backup. So what that means is we'll back up your server every day for up to 30 days. And then on the 31st day, we will uh, delete the first backup. So you can keep having those 30 days to go back to 30 snapshots in time to go back to. And of course, with that comes predictable cost, right? You know what's gonna cost you every single year because you have that service, the recurring service fee. Benefit number two of infrastructure as a service is upgrade and support. If you wanted to, we can roll in upgrades as a part of that service. So that would include Windows upgrades, security patching in your Windows, SolidWorks and SolidWorks PDM upgrades if you're after that, and even Microsoft SQL upgrades and support. So all that can be rolled into the program if you'd like, but I think most importantly is hardware upgrades. You don't ever have to worry about purchasing RAM or hard drive or a motherboard frying ever again. All of them or most of them, the suppliers for you know the cloud service do offer 24-7 support. So that's something that's, you know, if your server is down, you can call them at any point in time. If you have users in Europe and it's 3 a.m. here, they can call in at any point in time. That's the, the added benefit there with this service. Now, benefit number three is, I would say, keep up with technology. What this means is let the big players, right? Let Microsoft put a server on the water and experiment with different cooling solutions. Let Amazon pay for all the new memory they can get so they can get you a better service. That's what AAS offers, right? It allows you to kind of get rid of that uh, burn on you and let the big boys do that and you just kind of pay that fee and expect that service from them. You don't have to ever worry about changing hard drive or memory or upgrading your server ever again if you were to choose a solution like this. Now benefit number four is of course security. Not only there's physical security, right? No, nobody can get into a Microsoft data center. It's very hard to get into. Um, it's monitored, it's controlled, so physical security should not be a problem. Now, on the virtual side, there are things we can do to make your system more secure. We can tie, tie down your firewalls, your you know requirements for people to get in. We can have some intrusion detection systems, so there's a lot we can do there to make it secure. So definitely talk to us if security is on your mind. And the last thing I'll mention here is the Insight program. So the Insight program was built by Period Technology to kind of support customers that need um, more than just tech support, right? We do have offer tech support with your licensing with SolidWorks and SolidWorks PDM, but the Insight program is a step up from that. We will give you dedicated support. So instead of calling in and waiting in line, you will have a person to call into that's dedicated to you. Uh, we can be your admin, kind of maintain your system, maintain your configuration, maintain what's there today. We can do your upgrades every year. We can um, maybe roll in some unwanted tasks and we can do that for you every year. Basically, Insight is a custom program that we'll build with you that is tiered. So we'll have this brown, silver, gold kind of uh, tiered approach and we can definitely get with you guys and explain what is it, what it is, what's included, what's not included, how much it costs. I just want to make sure you guys know some of the added support, added uh, capability there is there if you're on the cloud. Now, 
I just gave you a bunch of different options, right? We talked a little bit about on-premise. We talked about uh, PDM Pro and standard using VPN, working offline, using Web2. Now I just gave you this IAS um, quick presentation. Next, let's talk a little bit about a different approach, which is the SAAS software as a service model. And this would apply for customers that maybe are not in PDM today or don't need a server to host PDM, but they just want a cloud hosted solution all the way. So before I even go there, let us know if you have any questions. I'm not monitoring the chat, but I'm sure uh, Eric will let me know if there is any questions out there. But uh, I'll also get questions in the end. So with this final solution that I'm going to talk about today, uh, 3D experience, there are, it's a vast system. There's many there's different directions it can go. Um, so I created this slide here to kind of give you a sense of where it stands. Now, what I do not want you guys to think is that because 3D experience is up here with some of the high-end solutions, it's more expensive or it'll only, you know, it'll be better than everything else. You can use, for example, 3D experience um, as uh, to have like the same capability as PDM standard. So 3D experience grows with you. It can start very simple. It can start just with simple data management and grow uh, over time to become, you know, a project management solution or a data management solution or uh, a lifecycle management solution, if you wish. So it grows with you, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a big beast uh, from the get go. Of course, the target audience for this uh, system is uh, the younger generation innovators, people that are used to cloud solutions that are not afraid of it. They don't have a server today to put this on. Um, existing SOLIDWORKS users are also a good audience for this. Um, if you already have a data management solution, you can get to 3D experience, but uh, just let's talk about that. If, if, you, if you have any questions or you're tired of your current data management solutions, we can definitely help you get to a better so solution. But uh, this is more meant for people that don't necessarily have a data management solution today. Of course, it also applies for out of office individuals and people that want to work out from home or from outside of the office all the time. Getting started with 3D experience is very, very simple, very, very easy. The reason for that is because it's everything is on the cloud. It is a subscription model kind of system, right? As long as you're paying that subscription, you can get to it, you, you can access it, and your files are going to be there available to you on a web browser. So it's very easy to get started. There's no installations and there's very minimal configurations. Now, we can set up your users, your permissions, you know, your cat release processes and things like that. But uh, everything's a little bit more pre-configured, it's a little bit more out of the box. So it just makes for life, just makes life simpler getting started just because everything's kind of already pre-configured, pre-done for you. And then the last slide I'm going to talk about here is why. Why would even somebody consider moving to that solution to that software as a service kind of model? And the best way I found to explain that is to talk a little bit about what we're at today. Today, many of our customers use a number of different apps to perform a number of different tasks. There are apps for text, for uh, data, for sharing files and, and whatnot. And all those require IT, require overhead. You're paying subscription to all these different people. And I think the most important part of it all is that they don't necessarily communicate with each other very well. What 3D Experience wants to be is that one-stop shop. It wants to be the solution for you guys uh, long-term. It doesn't require infrastructure because there's no server to install this on. It doesn't require overhead because it's basically a subscription model. And the most important part of it all is the apps inside of it are integrated. If you ever want a demonstration of what it is, what it does, we can definitely go through that with you, but basically, all apps within 3D experience as referencing the same data. So that's you no know, data management 101, right? You want one source of the truth. And that's exactly what 3D experience does. It references the same CAD components, the same office docs. So all the apps are kind of collaborating and talking to one another in that sense. 